let's take a look at the difference between blocks and block states. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the difference between blocks and block states. And first of all, for that, we're going to break out of the PowerPoint slides to get a little bit into the theory of the whole thing. So the general idea is that when we have blocks, those are basically singleton patterns. Now, what is a single pattern? Well, you can think of this as only having one field, so or one object of this actually existing. And we can see this in either our mod blocks class or the blocks class for vanilla, where each block, for example, in this case, the redstone ore block is created once. So we have new redstone ore block only once, and this is saved in one field for one particular block. So that's the general idea for the block. It's a single pattern. Now you might ask, yeah, but we have multiple blocks of the same type in the world. I can set a second, you know, redstone or block down and functions as a different block. Exactly. But those would be called block states. So block states are instances of a particular block inside of the world. Those save some additional data, such as the block position, the block properties. Those are the block properties that we are assigning in the mod blocks class, for example, and then also the block state properties, which we're basically going to really dig deep in this tutorial right here. So we're basically going to go through the idea what those are and how you can really use them. Well, the block states in and of themselves are saved by the world and they can only be changed by the world. This is also usually only on the server. And we can do this by doing, for example, world dot set a block state and then passing in the given parameters that we need. Now, block state properties are a way of saving some data or storing some data in blocks. And we can see a, let's say, a more trivialized version of the redstone or block, which saves this Boolean property lit right here, which is just equal to a already defined Boolean property. And you can see block state properties have to basically be defined in the block class, in a custom block class. And what's very important is that the append properties method is called and overridden rather. And otherwise it will not work. So this is a very important thing. Now a property always has a value, so it can never be null. A block can have multiple different properties. We've seen this with the stairs and with the doors, for example. And what's really cool is that the block state properties can then be used to refer to different models inside of the block states JSON file, depending on their values. So here are two examples or one example of the redstone or block once again, where lit is false, then it looks like this. And if lit is true, then it looks like this. And we're going to actually make our own custom block with our own custom block property. It actually is not that crazy. Now, one thing you might ask, yeah, but why wouldn't I just add a Boolean here? That's like way easier. I can just add a static Boolean or even a non static Boolean and then we would be fine. Well, no, because once again, this block is created only once. So a Boolean, whether it be static or non static would only be created once. Therefore, the Boolean not being a Boolean property or in an integer, not an integer property would then be shared across all different blocks of that type. And of course, that doesn't make any sense whether or not this block is lit or this block is lit. They don't have anything to do with each other. Maybe if they are next to each other, but even then, you know, it they don't really connect. So if you have an integer or a Boolean instead of properties, then you would have this for every block the same. And that's, of course, not what you would want. How do you change a block state? Well, we've seen the set block state method. That is basically the way that you do it. You do this at a particular position with a particular new state, right? So state dot with this plot property here and then setting it to this value. And then the notify all is just a flag that we need for the updating behavior. We're not going to worry about this too much. We're basically always going to use notify all for the time being. Although anything else uh, is more complicated and you will basically will figure this out as you go along as well. So that's the general theory behind it all. Now let's go to IntelliJ and let's see what we can see. Let's actually also end the slide presentation. There you go. So there it is. And the general idea, first of all, is let's press shift twice and let's put in redstone or block so that we can see. And then let's go in here. 
and we can see there you go so we have the public static final boolean property called lit and that's just equal to a already defined boolean property and then we can also see when we go in here for example the random tick world.set block state at a particular position with the state lit is then set to false and then we're notifying all of the blocks at the very bottom we can also see the append properties method exactly like we would expect it to and now let's create our own block in the custom package right click new java class called the it's going to be the mithril lamp block and this will of course extends the block class once again so let's hover over this create constructor matching super and then we will just add a or our own property here and we're going to make a public static final boolean property called clicked and this is going to be equal to boolean property dot of and then we're going to pass in a name here and it's just going to be clicked and there you go now what's really cool is that we have different types of properties so if i middle mouse button click on this you can see this is a property of type boolean and if i click on property and press ctrl h then we can see there are also enum properties this is basically the direction property there are also some others of course and then the int property as well so those are basically the three types. You could, of course, also make your own type, but that is way more advanced. Usually also not really needed, to be honest. So usually this should all work. Now, of course, once again, the most important thing here, append properties method. And then here we just want to do a builder.add and then add the clicked property to it. There you go. If you have multiple properties, you can just separate them by a comma and then add the next property as well. So that also works. Now, in this example, of course, that doesn't make any sense. We only want the click property once. So there you go. And how do we now change this property? Well, we're going to use the onUse method. That is the method that is called when we right click. And what we're going to say, first of all, is we're going to say action result dot success. So you're going to return here and then well, how does this method look? Well, it actually should be fairly straightforward. We're going to say not world is client. So we only want to proceed when we are on the server. This is why the exclamation mark here is extremely important. So please note this. And then hand is equal hand dot main hand. And then we want to proceed. Otherwise, this might be called twice. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a Boolean called clicked. Or let's actually call this current state. That's also fine. And then we're going to say state.get. So this is how we get a value of a particular property. We just need the state here. This is, of course, the block that we right clicked. Then we're getting the actual Boolean property value by passing in the Boolean property here. And then what we're going to say is world.setBlock state at the particular position that we've clicked. And then we're going to say state.with. And now we're actually setting the block state property to the reverse of what it is right now. So we're just going to basically, actually, this is current state, of course, now current state, there you go. And then with flag free, now flag free is the same as a block dot notify all. You can see if I middle mouse button click on this, this is a three, so this would also be fine. You can also hover over this, I believe, and you should be able to see the different flags that are basically possible to put in. Like I said, they're really not that important to us at the moment we're always going to use notify all or three either of those will work totally fine and that's actually all that we need to do so now we can right click on the mithril lamp block and we'll basically turn it on and off so we can make the click property true or false and that is pretty much all of the block code done we now of course need to still actually in the mod blocks class register it we're just going to copy over the lilac flower and we're going to call this the mithril underscore lamp. And this is, of course, the mithril underscore lamp. Now, this is going to be a mithril lamp block, which only takes in one parameter. And that is this. Now we're going to make the settings, the block settings here of, let's say, material dot metal. Probably there you go. Material dot metal strength is fine. Let's also just add the requires tool because why not? We do not need the non-opaque, but what we do want is we're going to want to call the luminance right here. So luminance is a method that we can call when we want this to admit light. And this is pretty cool. So you can see this takes in a two int function of type of lock state. Now, you, some of you might say, what the frick is this? That's really complicated. No, it is actually not. So it is pretty much the same as a supplier, but instead of just having empty parentheses, we're going to put something in there like state, then the arrow, and then we can actually use this state because this now 
is a block state. So that's pretty cool. So we can say state dot get. So we get a property from this state. We're going to say mithril lamp block dot clicked. So now we get the actual state of this well particular block. And we're going to say, okay, if the actual state, once I can actually remap this, there you go. So if I get the state, if this is true, then I want to return 15. So max integer value of light. And if it's not true, then we're going to just return zero. So this just turns it into a lamp that I can basically turn on and off by right clicking it. That's that's actually really cool. And that's how easy this is also. So luminance method really freaking cool as well. And of course, now, well, it's just down to the JSON files, basically. Um, the code is done. So let's just take a look at first of all, of course, the translation, because otherwise I might forget this. And so let's just add the Mithra lamp right here. There you go. And then going on to the block states JSON. So the block states JSON is of course now the interesting one because we have used well different block states properties. And there you go. So we have clicked false and clicked true. And they just point to the Mithra lamp off and Mithra lamp on block model files. So this is of course something we've seen a couple of times with the door, with the fences. They were a little bit different, but especially with the stairs, right? Those were pretty freaking crazy. And this is exactly the same thing. Now it's just basically completely custom here. The clicked here is of course the same name as this one should be fairly self explanatory, all things considered. So nothing too crazy. And then let's add the block model file as well. So this is going to be the lamp off and lamp on. There you go. Those are however, completely normal, they just point to a texture. Pretty much the same thing with the item model file. It also just points to the off texture or rather the off block model. And then of course it points to the off texture. Let's also get the textures over here. There you go. And that is pretty much all that we need to do. So hopefully with the theory behind it and you know, this example, it sort of illustrates the idea. You can of course always look at some vanilla examples. So for example, the door block might be interesting. But if we just take a look at the door block here, you can see there are a lot of different properties. This is why I said the redstone or block. It's pretty much the simplest example of a block that has a property, but doesn't have, you know, multiple different things also going on. Because look at this craziness. This is really freaking crazy. So this is why I said the redstone or block is probably the best to take a look at for an example. And you can also, of course, always take a look at some GitHub repositories of other popular mods and see how they might be using some block state properties as well. But for the time being, for completion's sake, let's see if it works. All right, we find ourselves in Minecraft. And as you can see, the Mithril lamp has been successfully added to the game. And if I set it down, you can see it has a different texture, I can right click it and I can turn it on and off. And if I just turn it night, then you can also see that it admits light when I turn it on. So this is pretty freaking cool. And well, that's actually how easy it is to well add some custom block states and block state properties, to Minecraft. The PowerPoint presentation is by the way available as a cheat sheet in the description below. So you can basically take another look at that as well, get a little bit more of a grasp on the theory. Otherwise, this would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated and special golden thanks go out to MC Arctic for actually supporting me with the gold block tier. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. So yeah.